Are we ready to get started? So just, uh, uh, we don't have a lot of rules. This is gonna be just really fun, but uh, we'll be drawing um, a bug. So these are gonna be all different types of bugs. And they're, you're just gonna have to guess what species it is. And, and, the, and we're not just gonna draw a picture of the bug, we're gonna draw other things so that you can guess the bug's name. Did I leave anything out, Miranda and Hugo? No, I don't think, we don't think so. Okay. Well, I'm going to, let's see. So I'm going to go first. So let me share my screen and do the whiteboard. All right. So I practiced all my bugs. So you guys can't let me down. You're going to have to get these right. All right. So uh, is somebody going to keep an eye on the chat and tell me what? I will. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, it's already not going well. A spider. It has eight legs, so it's not a fly. I guess is spider bird. <laughs> bird eating spider. Hawk spider. So you're right on the hawk, spider hawk. <laughs> I think that's another, I think that's another hint. So Laura Beth wants to know what kind of spider can eat a bird. And you know what, we just came, hairy spider hawk, is that it? I don't even know what the answer is. It's not, it's a, so hawk is the second word. Yes. Tarantula hawk wasp. Yes, who guessed that? <laughs> okay. That's, that is right. Oh, wait, we had, a, we had a tarantula hawk. Oh, it's a tarantula hawk. So just sorry, Jennifer got that in there before Coco. Good job. All right, let me um, show you a little bit about the tarantula hawk. All right, so the tarantula hawk is a species of wasp that preys on tarantulas. So you can see that it has caught a tarantula. And now this is a huge species of wasp. Like, it's about that big on your hand. And it's actually a parasitoid wasp. So I don't know if you've caught any of the talks this week about talking about parasitoids. So what the female wasp does, she will catch a tarantula and lay one egg in the tarantula. And then the wasp larvae will go inside the tarantula and eat the tarantula from the inside. And then it will um, pupate and will come out of the tarantula. And the tarantula does not survive this encounter. All right. So let's see. Uh, you're muted. Okay, I'm unmuted now. <laughs> okay, so let's try all right, the next one. Here we go. Oh, let me clear.
Laura said there's a box. Good, all right. I'm sorry, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. We are good. We're good. Ah, uh, there we go. Any guesses? Someone earlier asked what kind of spiders can eat a bird, and we just saw a talk from Wade Harrell and he talked about he had a bird eating tarantula. So we have some guesses from Jennifer said sandpaper. <laughs> Laura said pop tart. <laughs> oh that's a good one. Thank so you. we have sandpaper fly, spotted lantern fly. Yes, I didn't even get to the fly. Spotted lantern fly. Good job. All right, let's see. Let's learn a little bit about the spotted lantern fly. So this beautiful, beautiful bug is not a fly at all. It's a plant hopper species and it's a terrible invasive. So if you see a spotted lantern fly, you need to report it immediately. These um, are terrible pests. So though it may be a beautiful animal, we do not want them around here. All right. Yes, All right. We had another talk with Rob Trickle that he talked about that. And they are, even the name has the fly, it's not a fly. It's not a moth, it's a tree hopper. Yeah, isn't that interesting? All right, here we go. Here's, the, so I'm gonna do one more and then Miranda and Hugo are gonna take a chance. All right, let's clear this. Let's see, all right, we're gonna go here. I suppose that that is the color, blue. Hayden say blue ghost and Ian said blue ghost firefly. <laughs> Yes, a blue ghost firefly. You guys are so good at this. All right, let's look at the, take a look at the blue ghost firefly because this is a really cool thing. Um, I think I'm not sharing. Let's take a look. So the, the blue ghost firefly is a very nondescript little firefly. So these are native to, um, to North America in the western part of North Carolina. And so people will actually take tours to go see these fireflies. And it looks like they have this amazing blue glow. And so unlike the fireflies that we see here, they, their glow stays. So it's a, it's a constant glow. And it's not actually blue. So their, their glow is green, like other fireflies. But the way our eyes perceive the light, so when we are in dim light, our eyes perceive, um, will perceive the light as blue. So it is a really cool animal to go see. All right. Who's next? I think that I'm next. All right. I'm so sorry, I didn't prepare uh, slides for my animals, but I have... Kerry and Miranda with me, they are experts in all these animals. So they are going to help me to say things about them. Okay, let me share. And let me raise. 
Okay, here we go. Mm -mm -mm. Let's start with this. So you can already tell Hugo's artistic talent is a little bit higher than mine. <laughs> Hugo, are you using your mouse? <laughs> All right. Somebody says dragonfly. Is it a dragonfly? Yes. This is a so dragonfly. So fast. Everybody's guessing dragonfly. Hugo, that's a pretty impressive dragon, I have to say. Thank you. So, Kerry, what do we know about Dragonflies. But dragonflies, okay. So dragonflies are predatory. So they will, we call it hawk insects from the air. Um, and I can tell you a personal story about a dragonfly that's my favorite story. Is one time I was sitting by Crabtree Creek and it was absolutely idyllic. You know, the beautiful, the tree, the leaves hanging down in the water, beautiful sunshine, warm day, and this butterflies flitting over the water. And I, so beautiful. And a dragonfly comes flying out of nowhere and grabs that butterfly and flies away with it. So it um, was very cool. Predation is always pretty amazing to watch, I have to say. Miranda, you have anything to add about dragonflies? Um, I know that if you want to learn more about dragonflies, then we have our own dragonfly expert here at the museum, Chris Goforth. She is usually out at Prairie Ridge Eco Station, and um, you can go and catch dragonflies sometimes with her and document them for a citizen science project. Um, so definitely look up Chris Goforth, and I'll figure out the name of the dragonfly project that you can participate in. Um, I'm sure it's on the website. But, dragonfly yeah. detectives. Yes, dragonfly detectives. And it's really cool. I've done it before. Um, I was not very good at catching dragonflies, unfortunately, but um, apparently kids are really good at it. So. <laughs> so the next one is for the Backfest 2020 fans because we had several talks about them. So let me start with this. Oh, Jennifer says European. All right. Well, says actually, Italy. more than the European. Italy, Italian. Italy. Adriatic. Wait, what? Adriatic in there? Well, what is this? Mediterranean. All right. Good. Somebody says, somebody says grass. <laughs> so here you go, you're losing your reputation as the best jar. <laughs> oh, Mediterranean fruit fly. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, so we had the, the super noses uh, talk was all about um, the Mediterranean, the Mexican fruit flies who are really bad um, fruit pe uh, citrus pests that the dogs are trained to detect. That was a really cool program. Yeah, People so there are dogs that they are trained to smell these fruit flies at the airports, which is amazing that they can smell a fruit fly. It's, yeah, they can, it is amazing. So they do a lot of training to be able to detect these flies because they are, they, uh, the USDA does a lot of work to keep these fruit flies out of our fruit. Because one of the worst things about them is that the fruit is um, intact on the outside. So you don't know that the fruit flies have infested it until you open it and there's all these maggots in the fruit, which is a little, not, not very appetizing. Okay, let's go with the last one. So detailed, Hugo. I know, Hugo. <laughs> so 
Somebody says bat. It's not a bat. Cat. Cat. Now people are saying cat. Similar to a cat. Tiger. Uh-huh. Tiger fly. Hi, tiger beetle. Tiger wasp. <laughs> what is the Asian tiger mosquito? Roxon got yep, it. Next. Asian tiger mosquito. So good. Hugo, your mosquito's amazing. <laughs> Look at that proboscis. I know. I don't want to get bit by him. Her. Sorry. It's a her. It would be a her. Yes, so, Asian tiger, nice. so Asian tiger mosquitoes are an invasive species of mosquito that we do have here in North Carolina. So if you ever look down and you're getting bit and it's a black mosquito with like little white things on its leg, that is an Asian tiger mosquito. And they are not good to have around here. All right, so Miranda. They're really good with this. I know, they're really good. They're really good guessers. All right. You ready for this amazing piece of art? We are ready. Ready. All right. Let's see. I think I'm going to regret not practicing. <laughs> Feel free to laugh along at home. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's a, it, when you're drawing with a mouse, it's really hard. Hugo makes it look easy, but it's way harder than you think. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm drawing it with Jennifer says LOL. <laughs> Laura Beth says mouse, question mark. Also, my children um, lost my... So somebody says eel, mouse tail. We have a tail. <laughs> oh, Laura says that's totally a rat tail, though. Yes, rat tail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if I can do a better job at this one. <laughs> so she says rat tail doesn't help her in terms of what bug it is though. But if you went to one of our talks today, you should know what this one is. So, a rat tail okay. caterpillar. Oh, Coco, rat tail maggot. Rat tail maggot, yes. <laughs> Job. <laughs> really, it would look more like this. They are amazing. Rat tail ma maggots are one of my favorites. That's a good one. Let's look at them. A good maggot. You know what it looks like, Miranda? Is those sticky maggots that oh. um, we give away for Finally Fridays. So look at that rat tail maggot. It's so cool. Yeah. So rat tail maggots are the the larva of um, a group of that we call hoverflies, and this is a one of the species here. It's not the same species as this maggot, I don't think, but you can see that it has this really long kind of tail that looks a little bit like a rat tail, and that is because they are aquatic maggots and they need to breathe, and maggots, um, so he has this long siphon and breathes through his butt, which is pretty cool. And apparently, like, fish really love them. Like, they're used as fish bait a lot, and there's, like, artificial-looking ones that look reasonable fish bait. They're used um, apparently in ice fishing a lot, which is interesting. So Laura Beth wants Laura to know wants how to big know how are they? What? So <laughs> Laura Beth wants to know how big are they? How big are the maggots? Um, from what I could tell, they looked like they would be about like that, like their bodies, and then their obviously their tails um, would part like vary their tail, their siphons. Um, Will vary in length. This species, the species of fly that I showed you, um, its tail would not be as long as that mat, the, the image of the maggot that I showed. So they, they, even the maggots, you know, vary a little bit species to species. All right, let's clear this level. <laughs> I'm going to practice my rat drawings later. <laughs> All right, here we go. See if I do a better job at this one. Uh 
no, unhappy kid. Hmm. Buxton says bed bug. <laughs> Okay, we'll have this door open here. The door. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a hint. <laughs> uh, Hayden Hope and Hadley say outhouse. Yes, yes. Kelly says it looks like Squidward's house. <laughs> it does. All right, and. Poop fly, dung beetle, house fly. What is this? Dung, dung fly? But I had it earlier. Somebody says poop mimic moth. I heard somebody say the right term for this little building here earlier. Or the potty fly, outhouse fly. Outhouse fly. <laughs> Yay! I like Jennifer's um, answer. Oh my god! <laughs> you know what, Miranda? I have to say, you know what your fly looks like? A cicada. What's a really good cicada? No, I'll keep that it's got the eyes on the side of its head. A stinky cicada. <laughs> it's an out. It is an. It's an outhouse fly. Is that is the correct answer? Yes. Here's the outhouse fly. Much cuter than you thought, right? Yes, so there, so, um, so there are a bunch of um, these flies that um, like fungus, that a lot of people consider them like gnats, so like fungus flies and stuff like that. So they um, um, eat kind of decomposing material. So you'll see them around outhouses and um, even, you know, if you, if you need to clean your toilet, sometimes they can get in there or, or if your drain is kind of dirty and stuff like that. So um has some build up in it. You'll see these, they're, they're pretty harmless. They, um, you know, might get confused for like a mosquito in your house or something, but um, I just thought the name was fun. So. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Laura Beth says there's a fly for everything. Fly for everything. So many flies. <laughs> All right. And let me Go back to my last one for this session. Okay, this should be simple. <laughs> Hayden, Hope, and Hadley say stick bug, bamboo. bamboo. Ooh, yes. Oh, that's Jennifer got bamboo. All right. Sam said that is a panda. <laughs> oh, it's a panda. Bamboo butterfly. Then bamboo moth. Mm -hmm. So there's more. Bamboo moth larvae. What's another word for a larvae of a moth? <laughs> Bamboo moth chrysalis. So cool. Panda butterfly rat tail packet. <laughs> <laughs> Bamboo moth caterpillar. That's yeah. cool. Yes, so good. <laughs> A bamboo moth caterpillar. And so here it is. Um, oh, it's so cute. How hairy it is. Yeah, look, look at that cute. So um, it's a caterpillar 
or a moth that is native to kind of Southeast Asia, um, but has since it kind of invaded like Australia, New Zealand, those areas, and um, can cause be a little bit of a pest. Um, with a with a lot of caterpillars, you see those really cool long hairs, and those can kind of be stinging hairs. So you just have to be careful. But it's oh, super cute. Look how dark he is when he get, grows up. He d it doesn't even hardly look like a moth, does he? Mm -mm. He almost looks like my uh... <laughs> your outhouse one. All, All right. right, we're gonna go All back right. to Mary. All right, back to me. So Amanda, I need to know your trick of how to go between your PowerPoint and your whiteboard. Oh yeah, there's just a, when you're at the, let's share your screen first. Okay. And then at the top, it just says uh, something about new share. Oh yeah, okay, let's see it. All right, so. Here we go, friends, this one. You're gonna have to bear with me on this one. Oh. This is exciting for Hugo and I too because we don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we don't know what we, what each other are drawing. So people say it's an acorn, a penny, a coin, a quarter. Quarter fish, silver fish. Silver fish. <laughs> Good job. All right. So the silver fish, oh, sorry, is so interesting. So a silver fish is an insect. And oh. I know we have them here in, in our house. Um, but they are really, 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 really primitive insects. So they don't have wings. Um, and so they hang around in your house. They eat like the bind, they like, they like polysaccharides. So like the bindings of books and things like that. So you may see them scampering around and, and they are harmless. They don't, they don't bite or, or, or carry diseases or anything like that. All right. That was a really good. Okay. Lots of people are saying that they hate silverfish. And I think it might be more of like the creepy factor. Like they're in places where we don't want them to be. Um, and it surprises. I um, I don't mind them very much. I have to say. Okay, are we ready for the next one? Here we go. I, that didn't. That didn't go very well. <laughs> ring. ring. Yes, ring, very good. Ringworm. Nice leg. Yeah. yeah. Ring legged earwig. Yes! Who got that? That was so good. And even even <laughs> wow, did you, it wasn't even because like I didn't know how I was gonna be able to say legged. But it Jennifer is you saw it on the screen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <You> cheated. <laughs> it's my fault for being a bad a bad screen sharer, I guess. Oh uh, whoops, sorry. I, I forgot the trick. All right, so a ring-legged earwig is a really cool little animal. So you can see the rings on the legs. So these are predatory insects um, and they live outside. Um, and some of them 
ha do have wings. This species does not have wings. It's a wingless species. And so they hang out outdoors and, you know, and they eat other bugs. And if you ever do find one in your house, it doesn't mean to be there. It's, um, you probably br maybe could have brought it in with wood or some, some other things from outside. So I always, you know, they, they have kind of interesting abdomens, um, but they are harmless animals. All right. Let's see. The next one. All right, this, is, this one's gonna be all about speed. Are we ready? We are ready. Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> Bed bugs. Yes. <laughs> I, I knew that one was gonna be about speed. <laughs> Marley was ready. <laughs> All right, I know, and I had to, uh... <laughs> and one of our friends says, ew. Yeah, bed bugs are ewy. I, th I don't think anybody's a fan of these um, insects that will um, get in your bedding and, and, and suck your blood. So bed bugs are a pest, they're a parasite. Um, and they, you know, they, the one interesting thing I think about bed bugs is that they probably evolved originally to be bat parasites and just jumped to humans, um, you know, to suck, to suck. So the, the bats got a little reprieve, um, but I don't know if you saw the wingless flies um, talk, the, the, the bats have enough to be worried about <laughs> with those wingless flies that are parasites on them, and they are really big and pretty terrible. All right, you go. Let's see. Let's get some get some good drawings here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. Share screen. Whiteboard. So this time they're going to be super easy, okay? So get ready for it. It's all about speed. No, but it's easy. Toe. <laughs> Foot. What is that? Oh, Hayden Hope and Hadley say centipede. Million leggers. Millipede. Millipede, yes. Millipede. So they are harmless and you can find them right now on, on your yard. I, I found them. They are super cute. Millipedes are here. That's my son's current favorite insect. We have like the little itty bitty tiny brown ones that you can find if you like pick up a rock or like uh, anywhere that's kind of moist. Sam says 1,000 toe bug. <laughs> okay. I like these very um, literal names. Basically <laughs> says 1 million ants. All right. So millipedes are arthropods, but not insects. They're in their own, their own order. Walking stick, Jennifer says. Yep. So fast. <laughs> Hugo wants to keep drawing. <laughs> yes. Okay. I like me who has to keep drawing. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like to draw. So walking sticks, they are very good in camouflage. And why do you think that they have to camouflage? It's just to protect themselves. So they look like, like, like sticks. Yeah, so a friend says they'll get eaten. And of course, Marley says leaf bug. Another name for bug? Leaf insect. Yes. 
Yes, Jennifer got leaf insects. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Yes. Something that is really cool about them is that they move uh, like a leaf and on the wind, and actually that they can change the colors to look like is that decay um, leaf. And actually, uh, we have some of the at the museum, and they are so so good mimicry these leaves that sometimes they eat each other because they think that they are leaves. And another thing that is really cool about them is that they don't need a male to procreate. Yeah. So what, what, I mean, when, what about when they take a bite and it's obviously bug and not leaf? Well, that they stop eating. They <laughs> have lots of leaf insects with like nibbles out of their sides. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> I, mean, I think that I've done they my- They each other. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing they don't need each other. Yep. <laughs> to procreate. Because they wouldn't be able to recognize another individual. Okay. Are you ready? We're ready, Miranda. I did practice this part of this one earlier. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can, if I can mimic it without looking at a picture. Okay. Asian, Jennifer says. What part of Asia? Japanese. Japanese. Yes. All right. That's the first part, Japanese. Japanese beetle. Marley. I found a mouth, so it's, it's a little easier for me. Japanese rhino. Japanese rhino beetle. Close enough. Yeah, Japanese rhinoceros beetle. Very good. The rhinoceros beetles are really cool. Um, we have a rhinoceros beetle here in North Carolina called the Eastern Hercules beetle. It's a species of rhinoceros beetle. This is the Japanese rhinoceros beetle. And I'm not going to try to say what they call it in, in Japan, but the Japanese word for it um, pretty much translates to um, like helmet insect. Like the specifically like the samurai helmet, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so these are amazing, like awesome big beetles. I found a female Hercules beetle on the trail the other day, and she is about you know, inch and a half long. Um, and you can tell the females from the males because the females do not have these kind of horn structures on there. I'm going to show you the Hercules beetles. The female and the male. So, you can see the male on the center, which I can see is this one yeah. and this one. And this is the female that doesn't have, and actually that you can see them with the open wings. Let me see, this is the male. Really cool. And this is a female. Yeah, and they, yeah, so the, the Eastern Hercules beetle can be this like beautiful, almost jade or pale mint green with those pretty spots on them. And it's pretty amazing that such a huge insect is able to fly, I think. All right, I have a speedy one. Get ready, get ready to type. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nobody has any guesses yet, Miranda. It was says, saying back. Yes. <laughs> I know what this one is. <laughs> and I'm quite, oh, Jennifer got it. Back swimmer. Very good. It's a back swimmer. 
All right, so we've probably all seen back swimmers, but I'll show you this very cute picture of a back swimmer. And um, these are um, a type of predatory aquatic beetle. So, and they're called back swimmers because they do lay on their backs when they're kind of moving around. And so you kind of see their legs um, kicking. They eat things like tadpoles and small fish. So pretty cool. I love the hairs on the back legs. That's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So Laura Beth asks if they float or swim. Um, I know that, I mean, they definitely like move their limbs to kind of swim around. I imagine a lot of these hairs are to kind of trap air. So they help, so it helps them float. Oh, she wants to know, so do they go underwater or they just stay on the surface? Oh, good point. I, I would imagine that they have to go underwater to catch tadpoles and small fish, but that is a great question that I did not completely know the answer to. Laura Beth. All right, are we ready for our last round? Wait, I still have another one. Oh, you have another, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was jumping ahead. It's because it, it's because it takes everyone so long to figure out what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> compass. Eastern. Eastern. Fork. Uh -huh. Eastern fork. Who looks and says compass beetle? Eastern Fork Horsefly? Eastern <laughs> Fork <Miranda>. <laughs> Eastern Fork Eastern Fork Tail. Yes. Yes, we've got a couple Eastern Fork Tails. I like your just kind of nondescript animal. I was like, well, let me focus on the most important part. And then that made it more confusing, I think. <laughs> All I right. Think forktail is a type of damselfly. That's beautiful. Yeah, so they can, you know, di um, the easiest way to tell a damselfly from a dragonfly is that damselflies, when they land, close their wings up behind them. And dragonflies are kind of always out straight. Cool. All right. Now All your right. turn. Here we go. All right, let's see. Tomato hornworm. <laughs> yes. Wow, you guys are so good. <laughs> you didn't even let me draw my worm. <laughs> All right. Yes, tomato hornworm. So these are really, really fun caterpillars that you will often find in your garden, and they eat your tomatoes. Um, yeah, Hugo had one this year, and I uh, and he let me use it because his got parasitized by a parasitoid wasp and had all these little pupa on the back, and so I actually took it to go on the news and talk about bug fest and, and parasitism. Um, but the cool thing is that 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 of course a caterpillar is the juvenile form or the larval form of the five spotted hawk moth, which is just gorgeous. Look at that animal. So. Those who don't like hornworms um, should just remember that they turn into these beautiful hawk moths if the parasitoid wasps don't get to them first. All right. Okay. I'm so, no, don't look, don't look. <laughs> so something about those worms too is like, they are very hard to, to, to find them on your plant, but there is a tree. It's like, if you go to your tomato plants, at night with a black light, 
you can see them, they glow under the black light. Yeah, that is really cool. All right, so hopefully everybody had their eyes shut for that. Um, all right, here we go. Okay, that hopefully <laughs> you'll. Northeastern. Eastern. Sam is asking, what did you do with California? California is just a little straighter than... And it's, I, I'm so, you should be asking when the world I did in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Northeastern Carpenter Bee. Yes. Well, it's just Eastern. So, the whole part. <laughs> Eastern, yeah. Carpenter. Eastern Carpenter Bee. Yeah, I'll finish on you. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Eastern, uh, so Carpenter Bee is um, is a really cool critter that we often see in, in our uh, in our like on our wood in our yards. You know, they drill into my porch and my deck, and they make these holes. And so they're a solitary bee. And so the female will go in there and she'll lay um, her eggs, and the and the larvae will develop in these holes. So a lot of people consider them pests, but I think that you should be happy that they have chosen to live with you. And of course, they're important native um, pollinators um, that pollinate all of our plants and are really, really quite adorable. So we should appreciate them and enjoy living with them. All right, here's my last one. I'm, I'm kind of glad everybody saw it because I've been the most... <laughs> This is the one where I was a little bit worried about drawing it, so um, here we go. The darkness goblet. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Beth says, oh no, okay. <laughs> then Ruxin came back with black soldier fly. Yes, look, look at what a good, okay, that part got a little messed up. Look what a good soldier that is. Marley thought it was a black snowman. Laura <laughs> Beth said that he's Abe Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the top hat, yeah. It was really hard to draw a soldier. Black soldier fly, all right. Let's see. Black soldier flies, again, we had a program about them, this uh, bug fest. So these are the incredible flies that, um, that we use as compost. So you can do black soldier fly composting. They can eat um, food waste um, in instead of it going to the landfill. So these, these flies actually can do a huge part to prevent one, the um, climate change due to the methane that the landfills put out. Of course, they convert, they, they call it bioconversion. And so they can, you know, break down this food and then it goes to compost um, and we don't have to send it to the landfill. And so it prevents us from filling up the landfills with food and other things, not just food, but anything compostable. So any, um, biological product, be it made from animal or plant, can be, they can take care of it. And in a really fast time, and what the amazing thing I learned is that you don't have to buy black soldier flies. You just make the conditions right for them and they come to you. So you can start soldier fly composting right now. They like coffee grounds as their substrate. All right, here you go. My last three ones. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Share the screen. 
quite bored. The slides advance so fast. <laughs> so this is another animal that we talk about with Rob Trickell because it is a pest. And if you are a Don't nerd, huh? Don't give hints. Everybody's so good at guessing. <laughs> I'm going to give a clue. If you're a nerd like me, oi, sorry. Hugo. <laughs> that is what happens when you talk. <laughs> if you're a nerd like me and you like sci-fi movies, there is one that is called uh, Starship Troopers. And the big bug is a version of this one. Western pine, western pine beetle. Yep. So the western pine beetle is one of the pests that you can find here in, in North America. Right now it's on the, on Florida. <laughs> yeah. Laura Beth wants to know if you can draw the creatures from Starship Troopers because she, Troopers, because she's never seen it. <laughs> Actually, it's something similar to this. Sam says they're terrifying. I know, but Hugo, your beetles seem so innocuous. Well, you have to watch the movie. <laughs> okay. Let me go to the next one. The next one is going to be a little bit tricky, okay? So use your imagination. All right, we're ready. Okay, draw, draw. Painted. Painted Lady Beetle. <laughs> Laura Beth says it's a beautiful paintbrush. <laughs> You're just showing off now, Hugo. I know, right? No. Painted ladybug. Painted lady butterfly. Yes, it's a painted yes. lady butterfly. So they yes. are from Europe, and actually, they're small. Fl uh, Butterflies are kind of brownish and orange, beautiful. And every year they, they fly from Africa and Asia to Ireland. And it's one of the most beautiful migrations that you can see. <laughs> and, and Sam says, match eyelash luna moth. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is super simple, okay? But right. we can finish this one without this animal. Let's start with the easiest part. Fly. Uh-huh. So cute. I like his little trumpet mouth. Housefly! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. All right. I have I have one buzzing around right now. I should if you he should come make an appearance in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miranda. She's gonna Miranda's gonna finish us off here. I think that we should print all our drawings and just frame them. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I say. that's the prize. You get, you get to print our drawings and hang them up. No, just only Hugo's. Um, oh, so as I say, we don't, have, we don't have prizes tonight, but we do have, um, we are doing an entry for a raffle. Um, so Stacy Lewis is one of our longtime museum partners, and if you've ever been to a museum event, you've probably gone by Stacy's table. 
So she makes these wonderful nature paintings and she has made one of flies and she will dog is the guess is and, and Stacy will um, has donated this painting to us and so what we're doing is we're raffling it off so just go to bugfest.org and go to other fun stuff and you, all you need to do is put in your name and email and you'll be entered into the raffle and so that's a pretty amazing prize and memento for um, Bugfest this year. Dog day Sam wants you to sign your, your drawing to you. Heartworm. Dog day fly, dog day moth. Dog mayfly. All right, I need to. It looks like a cicada again. Dog day damselfly. I thought come, on, come on, guys, put it all together. Groundhog. <laughs> Dog day damsel fly poop. <laughs> nobody, nobody knew what this was. They just didn't put a it up. Flea. Dog spring. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Dog spring mayfly. <laughs> oh, Hugo. What? The dog days of summer. All right, you guys have said all the words. You just haven't put them together. Dog day, dog day cocoon. cocoon. Dog spring tick. <laughs> I feel like I need to look up a picture. Oh, no, Sam's getting so close. Dog spring cicada. You got one word wrong. Spring dog cicada. Dog summer cicada. Puppy. Canine spring cicada. <laughs> oh, I think we might... I have to, I think we might have to give this to, um, what do you think, Hugo? Dog Ides of May Cicada. <laughs> so we have the dog correct, the cicada correct. What happened in the middle? Just one of these. Cicada larvae. What is one of these? We don't know. <laughs> dog calendar cicada, dog date fly, weekend date. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm up. July plus August. Dog month. Nona as in the summer. <laughs> All right, Hugo, what is it? I don't we know. Get it? I don't know. <laughs> dog summer cicada. Dog May cicada. Summertime dog cicada. <laughs> <laughs> We have to put everybody out of their misery, Hugo. Come on. It's a dog day cicada. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to say that so is this pretty is the cicada that emerges in the dog days of summer in July. <laughs> the annual cicada, and it is a small one. Mm. Okay. Okay, so I want to share with you. Um, if you go to backfest.org, just go to other fun stuff and just check all these videos because they are great. And then here is the Backfest painting raffle.
So you have mm. to watch it and click in here to enter to the raffle. Yeah, and Sam has put the, um, the link in the chat, so. Okay. All right, we're over time. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with us. This was so much fun, everyone. So, oh, I'm so glad Jennifer says this is, um, her kids enjoyed this one the most. So, oh, that's so good. Hey, before you go, I will tell you this really fun fact that I learned today. So this is going to be the last one that I did, but obviously I'm terrible and it takes me too long. Um, but this is the North Island zebra moth. And I learned when I was researching this, that this is the only Lepidopteran out of 180,000 known species that does not have mirror image patterns on the wings. And it's only two species of insect in the entire world that have these um, wing patterns that don't match. The other one is a type of mantid. And so, at first glance, they look similar, but if you look closely, like you see, like these are not the same on either side. And I didn't know that all the other ones had exact mirror images, but yeah. that's super cool. That is so cool. That is so cool. And this is a species of moth that's endemic to New Zealand. So that's the only place it can be found. Isn't that interesting? And so Rexon asked, is that a nosy pilled woodlouse beside the dog day cicada? And I thought it was an isopod, but it sounds like, Rexon, you know your um, nosy-pilled wood lice, so you're probably right. <laughs> yes, I also assumed it was just an isopod, but... Very cool. All right, everyone, we had such a fun time sharing this with you. So hopefully you'll be able to join some more Bug Fest programs tomorrow. We have some really cool things um, going on. Yeah, okay. and of course, if you want a t-shirt, just go to backfest.org and get your t-shirt or join or renew your museum membership and get one for free. Jennifer, we might have to do another another Pictionary, not for Bug Fest, but um, maybe we'll put some on the calendar in the future. Yeah, well, in we'll Darwin Day, we've got Darwin Day, gonna, we're going to have a virtual Darwin Day coming up in November. So, and our theme is fish. So I bet we could do some really fun Pictionaries <laughs> with fish. Maybe we'll get a different artist. <laughs> no, it's fun. That's what's fun. Oh, well, I think somebody said maybe we could have the audience join in for one. And that, that actually is a really fun idea. So maybe, maybe we'll think about how we can do that. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night. He's resuming operations next week on Tuesday. So if you haven't already and you want to visit the museum, um, then head over to naturalsciences.org and grab your free um, ticket reservations. So. Thanks to Terminix and BASF. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.